Usually, freeze when I go, hi, I'm Phil, and then I kind of freeze. Um, it happens a lot with taxi drivers, and they ask what you do, and I sort of go, uh, uh, I kind of, uh... Uh, typically, I'll leave for work somewhere between 9 and 10 in the morning, depending on what's going on on my day. Um, and then I'll walk through the park, which is really nice if it's a sunny day. Um, come into the department and on my way in I, I put my sandwiches in the fridge and get myself, um, fill up my bottle of water and head to the office. I, I, you sort of end up saying something like, I work on a, a, a spacecraft or a NASA-led spacecraft because that always sounds, because there's this kind of mystique about NASA so it sounds kind of cool. Okay, it's called Swift, uh, named for the bird. Because um, the Swift, the bird, uh, one of the things they do is they catch insects on the wing, on the fly, and Swift is designed to catch gamma ray bursts on the fly. Uh, a gamma ray burst, um, in its simplest form, is just a flash of gamma ray radiation, which is very high energy radiation. I worked out if you were to boil your kettle, fill it with water, and just turn it on, and you were able just to leave it on and on and on, you would have to run it for 200,000 million, 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 million years in order to use up the amount of energy that a gamma ray burst will give off in about 10 seconds. So these things really are absolutely phenomenal. SWIFT is a satellite that's been in orbit for about three years now. Um, it's much bigger than the model that you see behind me. If it was really here, no, it would look four times the size of this. Um, and obviously wouldn't fit in this room, therefore, which is why we've got a quarter scale object. And it'd probably be rather cold, obviously, having been in space for uh, four years now, or nearly four years. So what SWIFT does is it has uh, one big gamma ray telescope called the BAT, Burst Alert Telescope, and that can see a large area of the sky uh, and it just is continually looking for gamma ray bursts. And as soon as it sees one, it says, OK, it's over there. And the whole spacecraft then automatically, without any human involvement, swings round to point at that area. Uh, also sending a message down to the ground to say, Oi, I've seen something, which we then all get pages on our mobile phones. My phone beeps at me, um, it gives me a couple of beeps and then I look and it's a text message which says there's been a gamma ray burst, it's at this position, basically get yourself into work or get to your computer quickly. I think I've had a bit of a stressful day and it's one of these days you really want to wind down and I just got in the shower, you know, it was just the right temperature, nice and warm and the blasted phone goes off. So I grab the phone, yes it is a GRB, find a towel, run down the stairs, sat there dripping water at my computer, had a look, and I found out that this GRB was right behind the sun and we couldn't, couldn't look at it, so nothing was going to happen anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it's very exciting and it's something that I guess not many people are going to be able to experience in their life, that their text messages actually come from a satellite that's telling you about a star that's just died. What was that? Oh, it's, um, <laughs> it's my phone reminding me I've got to go to a meeting in a minute, that's all right. <laughs> so I'm writing a paper, which is hopefully going to be published in a research journal. But when you write a paper, it's always good to get other people involved, and there's a lot of people being involved in this work. So we're all going to get together, uh, all the people at Leicester, and just have a look at it and decide, is this the best way to present the results? Are there other ways? What science do we want to do with it? And, and just have a bit of a discussion about um, turning the sort of rough draft into hopefully a, a really good paper that will sort of be cited by a lot of people in the future. See, I have a tendency to kind of get a bit personally attached to the work and when people criticise it you take it personally but actually when you look at it we're all just trying to make this the best it could be and there's a lot of good stuff come out of that. I feel a bit silly, some of it you look at and think oh, oh nuts I should have thought of that but, um, but real life is you don't always think of everything you could have thought of, that's why we have collaborations. Um, so. I actually found that a really positive meeting and uh, you know I'll be back in 10 days time with another draft of the paper that will hopefully knock people's socks off. I've come to the University Observatory which is somewhere I came when I was a, a schoolgirl. I came to one of their evening open events and look through a telescope for the first time. So that was a really exciting moment for me. Um, 
This is one of the telescope domes. I definitely like to encourage people to at least look through a telescope once in their life because it's a a really special experience to have. I've been interested in space, I guess mainly in that kind of geeky science fiction way, you know, building a Starship Enterprise or whatever would be really cool. And, and it's just a fascinating uh, field because uh, there's just that, that mystique about it and that just captured me in, and has captured my imagination since I had one, really. I think that also gives it a merit of 80. I mean, if you if you look at what you can do with your life, I, I guess. I mean, there are all sorts of really worthwhile things, obviously, that, that you can do. Um, generally, you know, going out and getting water to people who don't have any and stuff. But you know, when I look at a, a lot of the same more domestic jobs, and and you think, you know sitting in an office, uh, doing someone's accounts, or I don't know, being a lawyer. They're, they're, they, I'm sure they're great, but, but hey, I get to look at stuff from the other end of the universe. You know, you cannot get much cooler than that. And I get to do that for my job. I get to spend my job doing this stuff that sounds really cool, and actually, most of the time, is as cool as it sounds. They never go off when you want them, so uh, never mind. Of ruin, you'll see it all clear. How steep the fall is, how long the way back seems. On the verge of success, it's all white and fluffy. Dry suns. Right, so it's a blur.